All right, so now to really gross you out, we're going to talk about viruses. So viruses are going to be a funky little category because technically they're not living. The reason they're not considered to be living is because they are not capable of having a metabolism and they're not capable of self-replication. That's why they need our cells to do what it is that they do to us. So super creepy, no one really knows what's driving them or you know any of that kind of stuff, so it gets you thinking. So um, they're going to be very, very, very small. Um, if you think about it, um, if I bring up my little board here, um, I can show you what I'm talking about. So let's say that we have a eukaryotic cell, and it's like that big. And so a bacterial cell is about 10 times smaller than that, right? So if we were going to talk about a virus, a virus would be like, oh, like that. So they're tiny, right? So really, really, really small, small, small things. Um, okay, so let's talk about what they're actually made of. Um, I think that is easier if I show you this on the PowerPoint. Um, this is a great slide because it shows you all the different characteristics that different types of viruses can have. So here you've got a tobacco mosaic virus, obviously that uh, uh, attacks the tobacco plant. Then you've got adenoviruses, and um, these are going to cause issues like respiratory issues in kids and stuff. Um, then you've got the flu virus, which we're all familiar with. And then we've got a bacteriophage. And a bacteriophage is a virus that attacks bacteria, which is kind of funky, and we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages to that. But what I want you to notice in all of these drawings is, first of all, what's red or blue. That is going to be their genetic stuff, right? So you've got DNA or RNA in each one of these, right? It's either or. And it's kind of funky that some of them can have RNA and no DNA, but there is a reason for that, too, that we'll talk about. Um, the other thing I want you to notice is that all of these guys are going to have that kind of silvery purple in the picture, and that's a capsid. The capsid is going to be a protein coating that's going to be around the genome. So you can see here, it's around the outside here, here, and here it's surrounding the um, RNA that's their genetic code there, and then you can see it here. It's going to be made up of little building blocks, these little blobs that you see here called capsomeres. So a bunch of capsomeres make up the capsid. Now, one thing that you might notice that's a little funky about this one is it also has that yellow that you see here, and that's going to be the envelope. So some viruses are going to have an envelope, and that kind of helps them to do like a stealth attack um, where they may not be kind of um, identified when they're doing stuff like that. So those are going to be the basic parts of a virus. Okay, moving on. We call them obligate intracellular parasites. So let's take this apart and talk about it. Obligate means that they have to, right? Intracellular is talking about it going after cells and parasites. Well, what do parasites do? They obtain some sort of benefit from the host, usually harming or sometimes even killing the host, right? So that's how these guys are going to work. And that's because they cannot reproduce outside of the cell. They don't have a metabolism. So they need our cells to do a lot of the stuff that they do. All right. Now, going back to my little uh, drawing pad here, <clears throat> what's going to happen is on the outside of a cell, so let's say that here is our cell, there are going to be little things called receptors, right? And what's going to happen is that virus is going to come and it has to click on directly onto those receptors in order to attack the cell. So once it clicks on, it can inject its genome into the cell. So we call that its host range. So any cell that it can click onto and inject its genome into, it can infect, right? And so um, some of them are going to have like a skeleton key effect where they can infect tons of different types of cells. And then other ones are going to have a very, very specific lock and key fit. So that's talking about their host range. The one that has the very specific one, we would say it had a narrow host range. And then the ones that can attack a whole bunch of different types of cells, that's going to have a broad host range. So um, if you look on this next little part here, I talk about different types of viruses and the types of host range that they have. So rabies, West Nile, if you think about those, they can attack humans, dogs, you know, other types of mammals. Um, so that's going to have a broad host range. And then if you think about measles, that's only going to affect us. That's going to have a very specific or narrow host range. Um, one thing you want to think about is the viruses that attack eukaryotic cells, they are actually going to have um, 
a very specific type of tissue that they're going after. So they're not just going after human cells, they're going after like human, human upper respiratory epithelial cells. So they're very, very specific in the type of tissues that they want to go after. Um, okay, so in the next video, we will talk about how viruses replicate and how they make us feel sick.